when she put out those pictures of the dude pulling his pants down and it looked like some gay act that was going on, he got on the phone. He said, let me tell you this. When I get back to New York City, if she's on the radio station, he's talking to a radio executive. He said, nobody that I deal with, nobody that I know is going to do anything with y'all. No business at all. It seems that Cat Williams has resurfaced with fresh claims, aiming to shed light on Diddy's alleged actions. Apparently, he's accusing Diddy of orchestrating harm against Wendy Williams back when she attempted to reveal his hidden side. Just when we presumed Cat had exhausted his tales about Diddy's rumored misdeeds, he's back with more, alleging that Diddy has been plotting against Wendy since the 90s for airing his dirty laundry. All of these uh, big dick deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. P. Diddy be wanting to body. And you gotta tell him no. Oh, you Lord. got to tell him no. I, I did. Now it's common knowledge that Wendy has a knack for spilling tea, earning her the title of the queen in that realm. However, Diddy seems to think she crossed a line, with Kat suggesting he went as far as attempting to silence her. This sheds light on the long-standing rift between Wendy and Diddy, despite their attempts at reconciliation. But Kat didn't stop there. He also disclosed allegations of Diddy allegedly orchestrating attacks against Wendy over the years, even after she ceased mentioning him. These latest accusations from Kat paint a picture of Diddy's shady dealings persisting unchecked for quite some time. Kat shows no signs of slowing down, especially after dropping bombshell details about Diddy's alleged attempt to silence Wendy. The buzz around Wendy's potential comeback and the thirst for her to expose Diddy's shady antics has been palpable ever since he faced legal troubles and public scrutiny. No one can deliver it quite like Wendy does. Just picture this, the Wendy Williams show making a comeback right now, honey. And guess what? Cat Williams is stepping up to the plate, spilling the tea about Diddy and his peculiar bond with Wendy. Let me tell you, Cat's dropping bombs left and right, and what he's saying about Diddy has got everyone buzzing. He's suggesting that Diddy might be involved in Wendy's current predicament, hinting that Diddy attempted to erase Wendy for talking about him. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. T.G. Jakes, any of them, the, all, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. And, 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 and anyone who takes that the wrong way, know why they take it the wrong way. If you've been following Wendy closely prior to her departure from her talk show, you'd understand that her relationship with Diddy has never been particularly warm. They've had their fair share of conflicts over the years. Despite attempts to reconcile and portray a friendly image a couple of years back, it appears that the animosity still lingers. According to Cat Williams, Wendy still harbors resentment towards Diddy, a grudge she's held onto for a solid 32 years, with no indication of relinquishing it anytime soon. Before delving into Kat's recent revelations regarding Diddy, let's rewind a bit and explore the genesis of this feud. Wendy has harbored a grudge, alleging that Diddy not only orchestrated her dismissal from her role, but also jeopardized her safety. She contends that he deployed individuals to threaten her in the early 90s, shortly after the launch of his Bad Boy Records, supported by heavyweights like Clive Davis in Hollywood. Wendy, concurrently, secured a position at Hot 97 radio station, leading to escalating tensions between her and Diddy. During its heyday, Bad Boy Records flaunted a remarkable roster of talent, featuring luminaries such as L. Kim, Biggie Smalls, Faith Evans, and the girl group Toto, among others. Diddy strategically leveraged Top 97 to amplify his artists' presence, ensuring their tracks dominated the airwaves. So, when Wendy began airing unfavorable opinions about him, Diddy swiftly took action. Despite Bad Boy Records' nascent status, it was already causing ripples in the industry. Naturally, Diddy bristled at Wendy's critiques. Things start to get a bit stranger when you add Wendy Williams to the Diddy saga. Wendy is under conservatorship and the conservator is named Sabrina Morrissey, a professional guardian. Sabrina petitioned to have the documentary of Wendy's life stopped because she said it was exploitative, but everyone is not so sure those are her real intentions. You see, the documentary shows that Wendy is being controlled and manipulated as she's robbed blind from all of her money. The mature approach would have involved sitting down to resolve things with Wendy. However, it seems Diddy's not known for his diplomatic skills. 
especially when it comes to those he views as adversaries. Instead of choosing dialogue, he purportedly orchestrated an altercation involving his girl group and Toto. Ever wonder why someone would suddenly veer off course? Picture this. You're riding high, scoring a major record deal, your stardom dreams crystallizing before your eyes. Then, without warning, you're thrust into the role of protector, defending your boss over a mere verbal jab that pricked his ego. It's just one example of how he exploits his artists for tasks they never agreed to. But Toto wasn't the lone victim in this tangled web of drama. Shine also found himself shortchanged in the deal. During the heyday of Diddy and Jennifer Lopez's fame, a tumultuous shooting occurred at a nightclub. Diddy found himself facing serious charges and the prospect of time behind bars. However, much to everyone's surprise, those charges mysteriously evaporated, allowing Diddy to walk away unscathed. It later emerged that Diddy had sacrificed one of his own artists who was present that fateful night, shifting the blame onto them to save himself. As per his ex-bodyguard's account, it's been claimed that Diddy purportedly offered incentives to witnesses to testify against Shine during his trial. What's truly astonishing is that Bad Boy Records subsequently severed ties with Shine while he was incarcerated. Shine himself acknowledged Diddy's betrayal in a 2020 interview, revealing that Diddy had apologized during a meeting in Paris. According to Shine, Diddy expressed regret for his actions, citing pressure from legal counsel to distance himself. If your name is Shine, people are calling you to the front of the congregation saying, baby, you ain't innocent either. Y'all, what am I talking about? If you guys don't know, Shine did this interview for Belize today that broke the internet because everybody was like, oh my God, oh my God, he's implicating Diddy. He's doing this, he's doing that. And he basically did. And he basically tried to say that Diddy was the one that uh, bang bang Natanya, that's the woman that was hit in the face. However, a lot of people are saying, baby shine, you're not innocent. This is all one crafted political play. And that baby, keep your eyes on the balls because it looks like everyone that was tight with Diddy everybody that was at diddy baby they got their own dirt and right now we gonna talk about shine according to cat diddy had a knack for treating his artists as mere pawns using them to execute his schemes even if it meant dragging them into conflicts with his adversaries fortunately wendy had her then boyfriend kevin hunter by her side ready to defend her honor when trouble came knocking let's face it wendy's wit may be sharp but she wasn't about to throw fists with those legs and arms. Facing off against three members of Toto would have been way out of her league. All that talk about getting physical was just wishful thinking. You all probably think Wendy wouldn't be silenced by a minor setback like that. Nope, not her. And if Diddy assumed a narrow escape would quiet her down, he was mistaken. Wendy intensified raising the stakes on Diddy, uncovering more gossip than ever as retaliation. From day one, she's been dishing out sass, and Diddy learned the tough lesson. He hit back with even greater force, playing dirtier than ever. They started wearing girl pants, and then they're wearing jeggings, and then, yes, it's very effeminized, but be very clear, there were lots of homosexuals in hip hop back in the 80s too. Um, and, uh, you know, that was, that was, um, you know, what's worse, you know, hip hop wearing skirts or hip hop being closeted and having a plethora of kids to prove manhood that, you know, and, and denial of something that shouldn't, you shouldn't have to deny, which is your sexuality. So I hear what Jamar is saying, but uh, we come from a very homosexual era of hip hop as well. A few months after narrowly avoiding an altercation with Diddy's girl group, Toto, she retaliated by exposing a photo of Diddy's son, Justin Combs, associating with his rival, Soj Knight. The embarrassment for Diddy was palpable. However, the tension between Diddy and Suj pales in comparison to the East Coast versus West Coast feud of decades past. Their animosity permeated the nation, thick with hatred. Speaking of Diddy, he was entangled in his own drama back then, vehemently denying the paternity of Justin and accusing Misa Hilton of deception. Yet, amidst these allegations, rumors circulated of Diddy's violent behavior towards Misa. Jean Deal claims Diddy wasn't handling Misa delicately. Instead, he purportedly laid hands on her in a brutal manner. It's astonishing that Diddy would doubt Misa's integrity, given the alleged mistreatment she suffered for simply conversing with other men. But then again, Diddy is known for prioritizing his reputation, even at great expense. 
So when Wendy unveiled a photo of his son socializing with Suge Knight, it dealt a significant blow to his pride. However, the situation escalated further from there, as whispers circulated about Wendy having an even more scandalous revelation up her sleeve, one that could severely damage Diddy's reputation, tensions mounted. In the 1990s, any insinuation about a rapper's sexuality had the potential to derail their career and Diddy couldn't risk such a scandal. Then, the tipping point arrived. Wendy hinted on her show that she possessed profoundly damaging evidence against him. Word on the street suggested that an insider had tipped off Diddy about the nature of this evidence. Reportedly, Diddy and his entourage embarked on a getaway to a tropical beach or an island oasis for an extravagant bash, surrounded by a bevy of women. However, whispers suggest that there was more than just revelry involved. It appears that Diddy wasn't solely focused on the female company during the trip, rather, his attention was directed elsewhere. Speculation abounds that someone captured a compromising moment on camera, showing Diddy in a situation that could seriously tarnish his reputation. It seems that the bombshell revelation is looming threatening to detonate and shatter his image entirely. Naturally, Diddy swiftly sprang into action, engaging in full-scale damage control to preempt Wendy's potential release of damaging information that could tarnish his reputation irreparably. Jean Deal reported that Diddy exerted considerable influence to ensure Wendy's dismissal from her role at Hot 97. It's worth recalling that earlier, I highlighted Diddy's utilization of the station to promote his artists and their music. Jean let slip some juicy gossip about Diddy's ultimatum. He'd yank all his artists' songs off rotation on their station. But he didn't stop there. He also warned that none of his industry buddies would touch Hot 97 to promote their artists. With Diddy's clout in those circles, when he made a threat, you could bet he had the power and the will to follow through. It ain't gonna be no artists, no nothing gonna come. He's telling people that at a radio station. When we got back to New York City, Wendy Williams was in Philly. In prior conversations, Wendy recounted an incident where Diddy allegedly attempted to sabotage her for exposing him. Now, Wendy's former spouse, Kevin Hunter, has also addressed this in an interview, shedding light on the significant threat Diddy posed to Wendy's life and career. No doubt, Diddy was dead set on shutting Wendy down. It's ironic, isn't it? Wendy used to be one of his staunchest allies, even backing him up on the very station where she ended up getting the boot. But if we rewind back to December 1991, well before Diddy even thought of launching Bad Boy Records, he and rapper Heavy D were making moves. He joined forces with Heavy D to coordinate a charity basketball extravaganza at City College of New York, intending to uplift spirits and support AIDS foundations. However, the event took a dark turn as the venue became overcrowded, triggering a devastating stampede that resulted in the loss of nine lives and injuries to 29 others. Diddy faced intense criticism in the aftermath, particularly as it emerged that the funds allegedly raised for the foundations never reached them. Some charities even expressed ignorance about Diddy's fundraising efforts on their behalf, adding another layer of opacity and suspicion to the debacle. In the midst of adversity, Wendy stood as a lone advocate for Diddy, urging others to consider his perspective amidst the chaos. She defended him staunchly, attributing the situation to a mere misunderstanding, and implored fans to grant him the opportunity to clarify before passing judgment. However, the moment Wendy began to shed light on Diddy's questionable deeds, he swiftly turned against her, launching a relentless campaign to tarnish her reputation and derail her career. What's more, her being under the influence and not being able to speak out has prevented her from telling the world what's really going on with Diddy and what she knows. Wendy was one of the first people to out Diddy for being into young boys. Diddy tried to silence her by getting her blackballed from the industry and tried running her out of New York in the 90s. Now the truth has come out of Diddy's preferences for young boys years after Wendy spilled the beans. So is Sabrina somehow related to Diddy and is Wendy being kept silent? Initially, it seemed he might succeed as Wendy faced setbacks, but she refused to stay down for long. Rising from the ashes, she returned with a vengeance, particularly targeting Diddy. She dropped bombshell after bombshell, revealing shocking truths, including allegations of Diddy's appropriation of Biggie Small's publishing rights. Rumors abound for years about Diddy's exploitative contracts with artists, leaving many in the industry vulnerable to exploitation. Reports suggest that Biggie wasn't naive. He understood the landscape and asserted his desire for complete control over his work from the outset. 
Allegedly, Diddy foresaw Biggie's imminent success and the potential interest from other labels. In apparent agreement with Biggie's terms, Diddy portrayed support but ultimately deceived him by orchestrating a scheme. Biggie found himself unwittingly signing documents that encroached upon his publishing rights, transferring them to Diddy's ownership. It's truly despicable how, even after Biggie's passing, Diddy clung onto the masters that rightfully belonged to him. Essentially, he pilfered from the deceased, sinking to one of the lowest depths of morality. For years, he selfishly retained these treasures, only to finally relinquish them to Biggie's estate a mere few months ago. In case you missed it, Diddy made a surprise announcement about giving all his former artists their full master and publishing rights to the songs they created under bad boy. He framed it as an act of generosity, portraying himself as a chained man going by the name Brother Love, aiming to right his past wrongs. He emphasized it as simply doing the right thing, suggesting a collective need for the industry and society to introspect and progress. It's about embracing evolution, setting a positive example, and reshaping an industry that's in dire need of reform within a world craving change. Let me share something important. What happened occurred around two years ago, but it's only recently been resolved. It's crucial for people to understand that this wasn't a mere publicity stunt. In truth, it was a calculated move, aimed at coercing artists into signing ironclad NDAs, barring them from discussing their experiences while working at Bad Boy. This tactic was particularly underhanded because the individual orchestrating it was already aware of legal action being taken against them by Cassie. Their goal was to secure silence from everyone involved to the greatest extent possible. Curious why none of Diddy's past artists have come forward with tales of their troubling experiences? Well, there's a reason for that. Some artists, like rapper Mace, weren't willing to play along with Diddy's schemes. Mace saw through the smoke and mirrors and refused to sign any NDAs. However, his relationship with Diddy has been far from smooth. Mace has been outspoken about ghostwriting Diddy's bars during their time at Bad Boy Records and claims that Diddy still owes him a significant amount of money. Diddy, on the other hand, dismisses these claims, suggesting that Mace didn't rake in much cash during his time at the label. But let's be real. When we delve into Harlem world, the conversation shifts to the rising stars and the ones who faded into obscurity. Consider this, who's making waves and who's struggling to stay afloat? Let's focus on someone like Mason, whose track record speaks volumes. He's churned out five platinum singles that dominated the charts in just a few short years. It's baffling to think that despite this success, he encountered roadblocks after parting ways with Bad Boy Records. Rumor has it that he was blacklisted, making it nearly impossible for him to secure another record deal. Perhaps this explains why Mason's musical journey post-Bad Boy hasn't been as fruitful. However, the tale took an unexpected turn when Mace opted to depart from the rap scene and pursue a path as a pastor. Diddy seized the opportunity to publicly express skepticism, throwing shade in talk show appearances and interviews, labeling Mace as a phony pastor. It seemed as though Mace held residence in Diddy's thoughts, perched atop his mental skyline casting a shadow over their former camaraderie. Mace wasn't alone in this revelation. Singer Aubrey O'Day also chose not to sign the non-disclosure agreement. And let me tell you, she had some shocking tales to share about Diddy. According to her, Diddy not only engaged in body shaming, but also attempted to initiate romantic encounters, expressing frustration when she declined his advances. Jean Deal corroborated her claim, affirming he had heard him repeatedly discussing arrangements to exploit his female vocalists. He know who to do that shit to. You understand what I'm saying? It's certain dudes that he'll do that to because he could, he could get away with it quick enough or he got somebody behind him or he got some people there they no matter gonna take his weight for. It's only so far he gonna go himself. It's only so far he gonna go himself. So now, you know, he gonna come at you hard. Try to play it off. It's as if every time someone mentions Diddy, it's like pouring fuel on Cassie's lawsuit fire. Turns out Cassie wasn't just talking nonsense. Her claims are gathering solid support from various corners. And let's not forget the drama of Cassie and Diddy's split back in 2018. 
Some might even call it Cassie's great escape, especially after Wendy dropped some serious truth bombs. She hinted that there was more to their relationship than met the eye, and Wendy, being the street-smart queen she is, saw right through Diddy's facade. After Cassie broke free from him, Diddy tried to win her back with a grand romantic gesture, publicly pleading for her return, claiming she was his one true love. He even resorted to posting cryptic messages, like sharing Michael Jackson's The Lady in My Life and urging Cassie to listen to it a hundred times. This post left us both amazed and disheartened. Initially, we were taken aback by what seemed like genuine affection, believing he was genuinely in love with her and saddened by her departure, longing for her return. Yet, while many saw romance in his actions, Wendy saw beyond the facade. She astutely called him out, suggesting his behavior toward Cassie was more about control than love. As events unfolded, Wendy's insights proved accurate. In Cassie's lawsuit, she alleged that Diddy relentlessly pursued her, no matter where she sought refuge, even resorting to sending people to track her down. The lawsuit revealed a darker reality behind the apparent romance, with Cassie fleeing her Ventura home to find sanctuary with a friend in Florida. James Cruz, head honcho of Bad Boy Management, hunted down Ventura with a stern message. Her single faced a bleak future unless she picked up Combs' calls. Adding to the pressure, a Sony music staffer echoed this ultimatum. Remarkably, Combs even coerced one of his lawyers to intervene, advising Ventura to heed his calls for her own good. Whenever Ventura attempted to evade, Combs and his influential network pulled her back into their orbit. Well, Wendy has had her eye on Diddy's dental situation for quite a while now. It's no wonder Diddy couldn't stand her because of it, leading to this ongoing feud. According to Cat Williams, Diddy supposedly took steps to erase Wendy from the scene to keep her from spilling any secrets. Luckily, Wendy managed to dodge any serious harm, which is why she's completely dropped the subject of Diddy altogether. I've had to turn down $50 million four times. Four times. You gotta tell him no. Oh, you Lord. got to tell him no. I, I did. I did. See, I got the receipts for everything I'm telling you. That's why I can yeah, say yeah, them so can't, freely. Can't, 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 can't. Fans are expressing a lot of criticism towards Diddy following Kat's revelation. They're commenting that they're not surprised at all, as they believe Diddy was behind Wendy Williams' radio show situation and even influenced Cassie to shave her head, which reportedly led to her experiencing depression. They feel that simply putting Diddy behind bars wouldn't be enough punishment. Fans also think that Wendy Williams has been profoundly affected, likely due to the relentless pressure she faced for fearlessly calling out Hollywood, especially amidst the current revelations involving Diddy. We can picture Wendy sitting at home with a smirk as all this damning information about Diddy surfaces. She's harbored a deep disdain for him for years and has been attempting to warn the music community that the danger lies within their own ranks. So that's all from today's video. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, subscribe and ring that bell icon so you never miss our upcoming videos. And don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments section. Stay tuned and we will catch you in the next video.